Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. It's two, two, <laughs> season two, Tuesday. That's so extra. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hi, everyone. We're so glad you're here for our season two premiere. Yay. Welcome. So if this is your first time, we're the how-to show that tries to save you all the embarrassment that we went through to learn something. And um, if you're back, we love that yeah, you Yeah, we're came super back. excited to be here. All right. Well, with me um, is Caitlin, and she and her husband were in trouble. Um, they went to the movies. And they went to kick her husband out because they said, you can't bring your own snack. Oh, my God. <laughs> they can't bring your own snacks. Oh, my goodness gracious. I meant you. He's the one who's getting mm, kicked out because oh yeah. he brought you. I definitely heard that incorrectly, but I like that. He... Also, it's No, yeah, you're not allowed to do. Yeah, no, that's weird. No, recording. you can't do that. <laughs> I'll be the snack. That's fine. Oh, man. Um, well, my co-host, Jenny, loves square dancing, alcohol of all types, and has a very recognizable laugh, just like Kitty Foreman from that 70s show. Yay! <laughs> oh, 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 yay! Her laugh is hilarious. And she's the <laughs> things that I relate to. Yeah, I do know. You know? Now I'm just going to take this... <laughs> bag of Cheez-Its up to my room and eat them sadly. Like, yeah. Sounds like something I would do. Sometimes yeah, you have to do absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, so many things have happened since mm -hmm. um, we took our break. Um, our website is mm. fabulous. Thank you, Caitlin. And it's up and running. And we have a way for you to <laughs> give us some money. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a Patreon now. Um, if you want to join our Patreon, we're happily... Uh, accepting people up to our Patreon site. And we have a few different tiers of membership and there's merch involved if you want to join. So something to think about there. We also have a website. If you haven't seen it yet, you can find us really easily at cknggkpodcast.com. That's it. Super quick and easy to get to. And it's probably going to be linked in the show notes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much from here on out. So that anyway. said, what that means is our show notes are going to get moved more to the website. So each one of our shows is going to have a blog post that goes with it. You'll find everything that we talk about there, any sources, all that stuff is all going to be in the blog. And um, we'll also be making sure we put a, like a shorter summary in the show notes so you kind of know what to expect and all that stuff. So yeah, look for us there. All right. Well, um, it's time for us to circle up. And um, those of you who are new to our show, um, Caitlin and I are both teachers. Um, Caitlin works in marketing now, but she's still got those teacher genes in her. And um, I am a teacher of teachers. So I still work with kids um, sometimes, but I'm also developing content for teachers. Um, and so during each episode, we are going to teach you something that we had to learn. Um, but before we do that, we have to catch up. We have to talk about what we experienced because mm -hmm. Caitlin and I first are friends. And so this is our weekly chance to sit down and right. talk about what's going on in our worlds. So for your benefit, we'll talk about sports and we'll give you something to take to your water right. cooler chat. Something right, where you and sound to be like clear, you know these about. are all, or right. <laughs> you don't know what you're right. talking about because be we clear. don't either. And you can say, <laughs> from, "I got yeah. this information from two right. ladies who have None no of, idea." Okay, what so they're we're, talking we about. are presenting you with facts. I will say that. But that said, this is water cooler chat, right? This is like, oh, I heard this story. It's interesting, and we're trying to keep you up to date on what's interesting. This is <laughs> no, just fun water cooler stuff. 
um, to start off because this is actually stuff we would talk about if we were to be hanging out together. We would randomly bring up these different types of stories. So that's really what's happening here. Go for it. All right, here we go. So um, college football is officially oh my gosh. kicked off. Which that's so is crazy. Pun, How are we already right? back to that? Um, right. I mean, well, that's I've fair. Been waiting. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so glad we're back. No. Um, and so we have already seen week zero, which they call it week zero um, in the season because most schools do not start this week. Um, but there are a few games played early. And we have seen week one, which was this past Labor Day weekend. And I don't want to talk so much about what happens in the season. I want to talk about what all these teams mm, are working okay. toward. Um, because in 2014-15, uh, college football yes, completely changed. We used to use the Bowl Championship mm -hmm. Series, or the BCS. And this was a series of 30 bowl games, most of which are still going on now. Yeah. But depending on what bowl you were invited to and how you did in that bowl, some organization would call you a champion. And sometimes there was more than one champion a season, or sometimes there was a little bit of <gasps> corruption in the bowl game. -uh. Really? In sports? Can't believe it. No way. So um, <laughs> in 2014-15, the um, playoff committee started. And so this is a real playoff system. But because there are so many teams playing college football, it's hard to rank one up against another or just decide who's going to be the champion. It's not like you're playing um, in your neighborhood and there's only 12 high schools. There are some schools that will never play each other. So we really have to look at their schedule, who they're playing against, um, what are their individual strengths. There's a lot of criteria there. So there's a 13 member committee okay. and each member serves a three year term. Um, these are people who are former athletic directors, coaches, they're former student athletes, they're journalists. Condoleezza Rice was on the committee. Mm. Do you graduate Condoleezza Rice, Denver? Yeah, University see, Denver? there you yeah. go. Um, yeah. And she fit the bill because they also have university administrators, and at that point she um, held a provost position. Right. Uh, there's lots of criteria, but it is kind of subjective. So each one of the 13 members watches film, reads articles individually, and then they come together once a week to vote and release over the course of five weeks, a top 25 ranking. During the sixth okay. week, they call it selection Sunday. And this happens in December. And this is when the mm. committee will name what teams are going to playoff matchups. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And um, right. this year's championship game is in LA on January the 9th, which is my birthday. And then next year it's on Luke. January the 8th. And that's in Houston. And I think I have told you before, had I been born on January the 8th, my parents were going to name me Elvis or Avissa in honor of the king. So thank goodness I was born on the 9th. Yeah, I'm glad you're born right? on the 9th. <laughs> I would not be making this podcast right now. No, you'd be a very different person I if that I'd had been I'd probably be working in Vegas. Mm. Maybe. Or Reno. Or, Reno. <laughs> or Atlantic City. <laughs> probably Reno. <laughs> so unfortunate okay not to bag on anyone who works in those places but you would just be a very different person maybe you'd be like um what's her name dolores van Carter. no i think i would no 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 in no, sister no, no. act no i think i would be um no. one of those elvis impersonators that you can take a picture with for five bucks <laughs> oh no and my jumpsuit's like kind of Ooh, dirty. That's not okay. I can't afford to dry clean it all the time, and I don't yeah. have multiple. Yeah. Mm hmm. No. Oh, Do I you have, have the white, white one. one? And a big cape with an eagle in the back. Okay. Okay. You don't have another color. No. There's Isn't been there red. also a red There's one. There's been green, blue, but white is the classic. And, you know, I'm okay. trying to make as many tips right. as white possible. Right. White is the classic. So, gotta go right. with the classic look. 
You gotta have the white one with as much Absolutely. bedazzling as possible. And in the Vegas sun, it just glitters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about. Good lord. Let's catch everyone up on what happened with Ew. Deshaun Watson. Yes. It was right. Um, this has now happened a couple of weeks ago, but I do want to make it very clear what's happening because um, the controversy is going to is gonna be talked about for quite a while. It's, um, it's, it's making some people angry. So here's what happened. Deshaun Watson is the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Over the course of recent history, in particular while he was um, playing for the Houston Texans, Multiple women. And when I say multiple women, I mean 24. Seven. Okay. So, like, no, they, they, 24 they, they women. They now have 27. 27. Oh, 27. Ew. No. I thought you were saying 24-7, that- which is also, <laughs> it sounds real. No. Yeah. Okay. So, 24 to yes. 27-ish women have accused him in various lawsuits of coercive, lewd, predatory behavior during massage appointments which is so gross right um two of these women have accused him of sexual assault of the 24 claims that i so not 27 but of the number of claims 27 let's say 23 of them have been settled okay Two grand juries in Texas have declined to file criminal charges against Deshaun Watson for this behavior. He was initially um, given a very mild sentence by the judge who oversaw this. She's a retired judge. Um, She was given a punishment kind of criteria that is basically handed to her by the NFL And this is a new process. That just came out of the most recent right. negotiations um, because mm-hmm. there was this idea that the commissioner, who right now his name is Roger Goodell, um, Roger the, Goodell. Um, the commissioner was judge, jury, and executioner. And there was, there was no um, outside thoughts. There were, there were no third parties involved. Right. So right. the new procedure... Right was that they would find an outside judge to look at the facts. Mm-hmm. But this woman was given the instructions that she must follow NFL protocol and and whatever right. precedents had been set before. And no right. time and has there been a football player with 27 accusations. Right. That's the so issue. So she went here. with a precedent so that didn't she acknowledges. That exist. Yes, she acknowledges that this is a very mild sentence. I think she could have levied a, a heftier fine if I if I understand this correctly, um, but she didn't. And she says, you know, this is because of the precedent that's been set. There isn't one that I can go off of based on what the NFL players union has given me. So I had to do what I had to do. So then. NFL commissioner, who's the head of the entire league, the entire NFL, Roger Goodell, appealed the punishment, looking for something stronger. <sighs> okay, so here's where you might start raging, Jenny. Here's where you might start raging, because this is where I started raging. <laughs> the, the hope um, from Roger Goodell and several others was that Deshaun Watson would then be suspended for an entire season. An entire season is 17 games. If, and if they go into playoffs, then... Well. You know, yeah. more, right? Right. So he received, Deshaun Watson, received an 11-game suspension and a $5 million fine. He has to undergo a behavioral psych evaluation and treatment for his behavior. Now, mind you, the judge who handed down the initial sentence noted, and so has everyone else, <laughs> that this behavior that Deshaun Watson is displaying is predatory. It's not like it, it's, there's no way to misinterpret it. He is being a predator and seeking out this sort of contact right. with these women. Um, in addition to the $5 million fine, the NFL and the Cleveland Browns will each contribute another, another million dollars for a total of $7 million. 
this money is going to go towards nonprofits that prevent sexual misconduct. Well, and that and is assault. how all NFL okay. fines are used for uh, they are mm-hmm. given to a nonprofit that aligns with whatever the the offense was. The offense so, was. Um, when right. you hear about a player being fined for something, all that fine money goes into charity. Right. Importantly, um, the reason that we're talking about a Texas grand jury here, even though he's a Cleveland Brown, is that all of this happened while he was with the Houston Texans. And that actually happened um, that he's changed teams in March of 2022. So he had been in the Houston area until March. Um, he will receive... $230 million for the next five years. This is the most guaranteed money in NFL history. No. <laughs> and while he is someone who is outspoken against racial injustice and police brutality, um, his actions, again, are deemed predatory by all who have any familiarity with this case. Um, again, many people were hoping, including Roger Goodell, NFL commissioner, were hoping for a full season suspension. Um, but, you know, this just seems to be par for the course of, you know, crimes, sexual crimes against people of all backgrounds, of all, you know, people on the binary spectrum just don't seem to matter. Um, I am bothered by the fact that there wasn't a precedent for this. We have seen NFL players accused of sexual misconduct and sexual assault. So we, we do know that that precedent should exist in there somewhere, perhaps not to this level. Right. Um, why to me is it that his initial, his initial punishment was less severe than, you know, players who are caught smoking marijuana or other, it, it just doesn't make sense to me on the spectrum of doing harm to others. Right. No. <laughs> and, you know, John like, said, okay, so this was the penalty <laughs> for four women. Okay. So mm-hmm. let's multiply mm-hmm. it by six mm-hmm. and charge that again for the other right. remaining 23 that, yes, he settled out of court with, but still he committed the crimes. Like, why are you settling out of court with 23 women? 23? Seriously? And frankly, Ooh. I wouldn't want some like someone like that on my team. And I and to my knowledge the Browns are not happy like that this is what happened um one that they have a player who's accused of this but two that like the punishment is not as severe as it should be. That said, you're he's getting Two hundred and thirty million dollars, like, and he just settled twenty three lawsuits. Twenty three, so that means you can hit him where it hurts if you really want to, right? Two hundred and thirty million dollars. Let's divide that by ten, shall we? There's twenty (laughs) three, like, right? Like, you can. There it is. Each of them could. I, I don't know. I'm just so angered by this story and frustrated with. um the actual punishment that has come down and I know people were hoping for more and it's just very disappointing and you know I really really wanting people to take victims of sexual misconduct and sexual assault crimes seriously and it feels like this this isn't doing that if you're wondering how the NFL And the players union, because again, the players union is advocating on Deshaun Watson's behalf to try and levy this punishment, right? Um, If you're wondering how they came to this deal, I've included in our blog post for the episode uh, a great NPR article that explains how they got here for this punishment. So that will be there um, for you. Yeah, it's a a great article and totally worth reading if you're really curious, because I was like, excuse me, what? (laughs) Like raging so um reading it was helpful it did not make me feel any better but it is helpful so there's that let's talk about something else <laughs> let's yeah. talk about something fun what are you okay. into right now so remember when you talked about how you installed a bidet and you fixed a toilet like all by yourself 
and you like want to yes. throw a parade in your own I, honor because this is a big deal yes because i feel like a genius it's like the line in in billy madison when he's like i am the smartest man yes. alive and you like go around the house spreading your arms like ta-da look at how amazing this is what i'm saying <laughs> yeah i dropped my yes. wedding ring down the sink and <gasps> i got it back oh my gosh I was so proud How'd of myself. How'd you do that? I turned off the water so that it would not ha- I oh. don't have to worry about someone coming and turning on the water while I'm inside the cabinet, which would Operating, not be necessary yes. if I didn't have two small children at home. I took right. the pee trap off, named for the letter P, not urinating in your sink. It totally right. sounds like a... And yeah. mm-hmm. I pulled the ring out of the trap. I cleaned out the pipes while I was in there. And I put it back together. Oh my gosh. I would feel so I was really proud of myself. (laughs) I was really proud. And right then is the moment, folks, when I would spill coffee all over the floor. Because I've done that. Like, that's what I would do. (laughs) Like, I did it. I'm so smart. Oh my God. And then kick over, like, the whole bag of cat food. Oh, Oh, man. (laughs) That's amazing. Congratulations. You should feel like superhuman right now. Do you? Okay, good. All right. Well, we got together yes. last week. And I yes, forgot to give you your together. book and, and Sam left a toy, uh, toy at our house. It just means that we have to get together again. It's all right. Exactly. I'm not even worried about it. Um, you can spread the love with the book. If you think of someone who's going to love okay. it, give it away. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, but at your house, you had chili limon limon. <laughs> almonds out on the table and I <laughs> went nuts I cannot stop eating these things so then I was like eating them by the fistful and I'm like take these away from me I need to stop eating them and then because I was so obsessed Jenny goes this is how much I love you and puts yeah, the I'm whole an bag. enabler she <laughs> like says take it away and I'm like oh no here's a fresh bag brand new oh no here take a whole bag home oh my gosh so now they're like on my grocery list every they're week so good. because I can't stop eating them they're yeah. so good Oh, and it's almonds, and so I don't really feel that bad when I go Look at what I'm holding wild. in my hand right now. I am <laughs> eating an almond. Yes. <laughs> That's why, like, my track keeps getting quiet because I'm muting myself while I chew. <laughs> yeah, generally, like, you know, eating while podcasting is typically frowned upon. People don't really want to hear me chew. You don't want to hear me chew? But... <laughs> oh, my God. Sick. Don't do that again. <laughs> so nasty. Well, the other thing that I'm obsessed with, because it's given me like an hour of my day, it's unreal, is my freshly minted first grader now likes riding the bus to school. (gasps) What? Oh my goodness. So for the first, you know, few years of his life, it was preschool. There is no bus. Plus he's in the same building as me. So I would just take him to preschool, drop him off, run upstairs, do my teaching for the day, run back downstairs and grab him. It was the nicest setup I couldn't have imagined it to be any more perfect. Unbelievable. Well, kindergarten comes around. We don't live that far from, this, far from school. It's really easy to take him. So we do. Right. We took him and we picked him up. Right. Like not a big deal at all. And, you know, a few days a week, he stays after and does aftercare and does extra play time and all that stuff with friends uh, while we finish up some work. And then a couple days a week, we pick him up early or whatever. Well, Monday of this week, we took him to school. Then Tuesday comes around and he's like, I want to ride the bus. I want to go on the bus in the morning. So we're like, great, let's go do it. We put him there, take him to the bus stop. And he um, predictably panics and says no. And when the bus shows up, he sits on the ground and refuses to get on. I mean, it was so predictable. We knew it was going to happen. So then we took him to school. No big deal. Not a high pressure situation. Right. You know, this is optional. You don't have to take and it. We're very fortunate that we have flexible schedules. You don't have to take the bus. And you right? cannot allow it, that to define the whole school day. Right. No. And, and there was an effort on his part to make it define the whole right. school day to be clear. Of course. Um, however, we were just like, no, it's, no, all, right. it's all right. We're just going to keep on, on moving. There's other mm-hmm. things you have to do today. It's okay that you yep. didn't want to ride the bus. Nobody cares. Right. Well, at that point, I had already told the teachers he's riding the bus in the afternoon. So I was either going to have to intercept the bus like, and stop him from getting on it 
or he was going to have to take the bus home. And his teacher was amazing. She like coached him through it, I guess, or just said, here's a friend. You're both getting on the bus. It's going to be fine. So I, in my like panic state, drove up to the school, like was the worst spy on the planet and was like hiding behind cars and stuff, just trying to see if he would get on the bus. I see him in line. I watch him get on it. And then I went back to my car, still hiding. (laughs) And then when I got Please tell to me you had like a trench coat and one of those glasses with a mustache on it, it was 98 degrees <laughs> here. You know, I did not do that. <laughs> no, I looked incredibly obviously like I myself. Needed, like, so the pink that was their music in the background. Mr. Bean. Um, right. So yeah, that's really probably more like what it was. So, um, get to my car and then I'm immediately texting my husband, like, what if he like panics on the bus? Do I like, do I stay here? So I stayed at my parking spot until the bus drove away and I didn't see a small child get off of it. So then I beat the bus home by like five or six minutes and he was so proud of himself. And now I have a first grader who loves riding the bus and it is amazing how much time that gives me back in the morning. It's like a half hour in the morning and almost a half hour in the afternoon, if not a little bit more. That's amazing. It's crazy. I know. I love it. And I'm so impressed that he like, he's the one who got himself on the bus without us coaching him. He just did it all on his own. Right. You know, like I'm so proud of him for getting on without us there. Probably honestly, it worked better that we weren't there because, you know, we weren't, we weren't a crutch for him, but he got on and now he's like, you know what? I actually really like riding the bus. And I'm like, great. (laughs) Let's keep it up. This is amazing. So let me just say so this. It's been really good. As a teacher. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Parents, hear this. Hear mm-hmm. that the bravery happened when there wasn't a soft place to land right away. He knew that mom would come get him if he didn't get on that bus because you mm-hmm. told him that. Mm-hmm. And the teacher knew that he had the ability to do it. Mm-hmm. And so he made the choice saying, you know what? I know that if I can't, someone is here, but they're not right mm-hmm. next to me right now. Right. And it's okay right. to take that step back as a parent and let the child try the thing. And maybe they're not going to do well the first time. Please. I cannot think of I mean, anything I did well the first time. Right. Right. And that's something that he struggles with in general is just, you know, not liking his performance on something when he doesn't feel like he's good at it. He gets really frustrated Mm -hmm. by that. So I think it, it, I think that was part of it too, right? Is like, he's frustrated with himself for not getting on it in the morning, but but also in the afternoon. Right. Exactly. And he didn't know that I was there. He didn't see me pull up, but I had said to his teacher, listen, the, the bus was rough this morning, you know, if you need me, here's my cell number. You can call me. You can text me. I'll be there in five minutes to pick him up. Like, it'll be okay. Just let him know I'm there to support him. And I don't know what she said or didn't say, but either way, my kid got on the bus and now he likes it. And so and you know what she probably it's said? been good. Sam, it's time to get, get on, on the it's bus. It's time to get on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably just yeah. normalized it. Didn't make it a first time. It wasn't, wasn't a, big a big thing. thing. Right. Get it. You're right. in the bus line today. Right. And, and here's, and, here's and he was talking to a friend who were yep. also riding. The they're bus. all getting on your they bus. They might not be riding mm-hmm. your bus, but they're all riding a bus. It's normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's super cute. Like the bus has a little like bug on the side. So he knows like I ride the bus that has this kind of bug on it. You know, there's like, you know, there's butterflies right, right, right. and bees and whatever. And he gets on one of the ones that has a certain bug. So and you don't have to just... remember that you ride 1902 B. Right. Exactly. So, you know, he's like, well, this is mine and I'm, I really like it. And I think I can do it again. So he's ridden the bus every day since to school, not home every day because again, we do after school stuff, but like, but on the days that he does come straight home doing the bus bus. Amazing. And the bus stop is super close. So it's extra convenient. Love it. I'm obsessed. Yeah. It's amazing. That's awesome. All right. You got any gems? Okay. So it's important that we affirm ourselves. (laughs) yeah right like sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader yes i as leslie nope once said i am i am like humble enough to admit that i am you know 
amazed by myself often. <laughs> Like, I'm inspired by myself, as I believe the way she I'm said that. I'm inspired by myself. That, I like that, too. I, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's, I'm humble enough to admit that I am inspired by myself. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Me, too. So, you know, I'm super proud of myself for getting this wedding ring out of the sink. I didn't even, I didn't mm-hmm. even look on YouTube. I didn't even ask for help. You no. didn't? You just, just did, did it? it? I said, what's the worst that could happen? Wow. I've turned the water off. Nothing's going to come out of this pipe besides disgustingness. I got a bucket. It'll be fine. So keep this in mind. You should affirm yourself. You should be proud of who you are. And there are moments where you have to be your own cheerleader. Like (laughs) yesterday morning when I see my three-year-old son standing in the mirror, looking at himself and says, who's the best Kit Fox? I'm the best Kit Fox. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he does not know I am there. Oh He's just talking goodness. to himself. Oh, those affirmations really kicking in hard. I'm into it. I Atta am boy. Enough, I am smart enough and doggone it. People like me. <laughs> <laughs> Only he would be the one who might actually consider saying that, too, because you're going to teach oh, him that line at some point. <laughs> oh what a sweetheart i need him on my team right? he's gonna have to help me be a true like that's amazing well my gem is not nearly as inspirational but my son <laughs> my son has been just killing it with some of the really funny lines lately and this one had us laughing for hours and still has me laughing so my son loves any kind of sweet, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, he's just like me in that sense where it doesn't really matter what the sugar is, but if you put it in front of me, I'm going to eat it and most likely like it. And the only exception for me is Whoppers. And even then in desperate times, I will eat Whoppers and it's not something I'm proud of, but it is just the way it is. So recently though, we've noticed that, um, his tastes have changed and he's not so much into chocolate anymore. And his favorite flavor has become vanilla, and then he likes to put other stuff on okay. it, right? Or he'll eat strawberry or whatever. But he, if he has a choice between chocolate or vanilla, he's going to choose vanilla every time. And one day he says to us, <laughs> you guys, do you know why Like, I, I changed my, my favorite flavor? It's not chocolate anymore. And we were like, no, why? And he goes, well, mm, it it kind of it kind of tastes like sugarness and it kind of smells like farts. <laughs> <laughs> and I I was like I'm sorry what? <laughs> you think Back chocolate that train up just a second. <laughs> chocolate chocolate does taste like sugarness. You're right. But it kind of smells like farts. <laughs> like what? what chocolate are you eating? Right. <laughs> Am I giving you some sort of like laxative yeah. laced chocolate? Like what is happening? And the answer is no, of course not. <laughs> I just uh I could not stop laughing. We he was like, What? <laughs> like, this is how I feel about it. Very matter of fact. And so that's why my son chooses not to eat chocolate anymore, because it kind of smells like farts. No. <laughs> Even though it tastes like sugarness. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm still laughing. My eyes are watering from that. Oh, my gosh. All right. Y'all know CK and GK love to support fellow indie podcasts. So here's another show you might really love. Charles, we just recorded for two hours. We did. (laughs) Now what do you want? (laughs) We have to talk about our show. Okay. Who are we? and Uh, What do we do? Ha. I am Martha Madrigal. And I'm Charles Tyson Jr. We are the hosts of... Full Circle, the, the podcast. podcast. You are a beautiful white trans woman. I will take that. <laughs> of a certain age <laughs> and tired beyond imagination. And you are a gorgeous black cis pan man <laughs> who has shared my life for 10 years. And we're engaged. I put a ring on it. Yeah, you did put a ring on it. It's a pretty ring, too. <laughs> 
Now we have a podcast. Yeah, there's not much we don't talk about here. It's true. We talk about LGBTQ issues, headlines of the day. We talk about fun things, too, like movies and music and television and pop culture. Mm -hmm. And we talk about what it is to be black in America and what it is to be trans in America and how those things intersect and collide. and... And child, it gets interesting. And you can check us out every Tuesday wherever you get your podcasts. Because once again, we're Charles Tyson Jr. and Martha the magical and this is full circle the, the podcast. podcast are we done now i think so okay we know this is a how-to show and this is when we would normally plug in the lesson but this is a short week it's a holiday weekend stick around till next week when we have something to teach you okay that's the end <laughs> Um, please, 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 like I always say, you got to rate us, review us, tell all your friends, um, slap some stickers on your car. I don't know what you got to do, but tell people that we're the best thing that's happened to you since um, chili almonds. Yeah, do you want stickers? We have stickers. We have magnets. We have stickers. If you see us in person, ask because we've got them. <laughs> if you get our logo yeah. tattooed on your body, I will pay for the tattoo. Wow. That's what I'm offering the fans. Okay? That, that's what I'm putting out there. You, I mean, you have to be really you, hardcore. If you love us <laughs> enough to get a tattoo of our logo, I will pay for it. What about a variation? Like the aviators and the bow? No. Oh, it has to be the whole the thing? The whole thing. It has to say, have Dude, you Dude, I would get the aviators underneath. and the bow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gotta rip off the entire logo i will give you the hex codes for the colors <laughs> okay don't oh, get our logo tattooed on your body that. no don't make do good that. choices and use your gift cards thanks for coming back to us season two bye, bye. Hey friends, thanks for listening to the CK and GK podcast. Find us at CK and GK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and rate, review, and subscribe on Apple podcasts, Spotify, good pods, or anywhere else that you pod. See you next time.